Okay, so we've created our movie.swift file, and I noticed that I created mine um, outside of the, the project itself. So I'm going to bring it into the folder for my project. And I want to look at the storyboard. So in the storyboard, we have our view controller. It's our default. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And in the library, I'm going to... I'm going to grab the navigation controller and bring it into my storyboard. And you notice that when I do that, it comes with another controller, which is a table view controller. And I'm going to position these over to the left of my uh, UI view controller. Right now, my UI view controller is the is the initial controller. I can tell that by the arrow. I want to make the navigation controller the initial controller. I need to drag the arrow over to the navigation controller. Or I can select the navigation controller and go to the properties and check the box that says is initial view controller. That will also move the arrow over. So we start our project. It's the navigation controller will be our initial view controller, but it's going to pass control to the table view. Now with the table view, we need to set up a Swift file for our code behind that table view. So we're going to go to the File menu, choose New. We're going to select a new file, and this time it's going to be a Cocoa Touch class file. And that Cocoa Touch will bring in the UI kit. I'm going to call this Movie Table View Controller. and we'll create this in our project. So here now is my movie table view controller. It's got the view did load and did receive memory warning functions, but it also added some functions related to the table view as far as the number of sections and the number of rows. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is populate my data. And I'm gonna do that in the view did load. We're gonna add a method called populate movie. So we're just going to hard code this for now. Um, down the road we'll look at how we might bring this in through a database. But we'll create a function called populate movies. I then need to create that function. So I'm just going to scroll down and do it down here towards the bottom. So we will have func populate movies. It's not going to accept any parameters. It's not going to return anything. And there is my empty shell. So I'm going to begin to populate my movies into an array. So I need to create that array. So I'm going to scroll back up here towards the top. And we're going to create a variable of movies, which will be an array of our movie class. So scrolling back down to our function, we can append into movies an initializer of our movie class, passing it a title. My first movie is going to be Rear Window. I want the year, 1954. The director, Alfred Hitchcock, the genre, I'm going to do a dot and in the IntelliSense will show me the different genres I set up in that enum. This will be Thriller. Same with the rating. In this case, it's unrated. And then the cast. And the cast is a, 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 str a string array. So I'm going to separate each cast member in quotes with commas.
And there's my first movie. And we can add a bunch of movies here for our sample data to see if our application works correctly. Now in Canvas, I've set up a Word file that has a whole bunch of these movies already created for you. Um, I'm going to copy and paste those in and would encourage you to do the same. But you can also add in your own favorite movies. And so there now is my collection of movies showing the title, the year, the director, the genre, the rating, and the cast members. So this will populate when we first start up our application. The next thing I do is tell how many sections I want. And in this case, I want one section. So I'm going to change that 0 to a 1. And then the number of rows in that section is going to be my movies data, my movies array dot the count. Next, I need to configure the data cell that we're going to use for each row. I'm going to uncomment out this piece of code. We'll add some code to configure that cell. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to my storyboard. And you'll see that we have our table view, and that table view contains a table view cell. And if we look at the properties for the table view cell, there's some styles. Right now it says custom, but there's a basic, a right detail, left detail, and a subtitle. I'm going to choose the subtitle. And you can go into the uh, Swift help documentation and see the differences between these four. The subtitle will give us a title and then a subtitle underneath that in smaller type. If you wanted to include, say, an image, then you could use the custom and you can define your own cells as far as the objects that would be in that cell. I'm going to go back to the movie table view controller Swift file. And we already have a line of code here. Let cell equals table view dot DQ reusable cell. What the DQ reusable cell does is it allows cells to be reused. Think of if you had 10,000 items in your, in your database. You wouldn't want to create 10,000 cells and scroll through those. That would just bog the system down. Instead, it's going to create enough cells to, to display in the table view. And then as you scroll, the ones at the top will get reused and repositioned at the bottom and repopulated with the next piece of data. Since we chose this, the subtitle style, we can reference the cell here. And it has a UI label, an optional UI label of, called text label. I'm going to select that. And I said it is optional, so I'm going to add the question mark after it. I'm going to set the text property. And we want to get the movie that is next in line in our uh, database. I'm going to create a constant called my movie, which is of type movie. And it's going to equal movies. And we're going to get the index number, which is going to be our index path dot row. And so finishing up my cell dot text label now is going to equal my movie dot. I'm going to get the title. The cell also has a subtitle, which is the detail text label. It's also an optional. I'm going to set its text equal to my movie dot. I want the year. And then we can concatenate a couple spaces. And I want the genre. And for the genre, I want the raw value. I need to convert the year to a string. So I'll do that just the string function. When we create a single view app, it automatically links our uh, UI view controller in the storyboard to our view controller.swift file. Here we created a table view controller, and then I created a, the movie table view controller.swift file. I still need to link those two together. So I'm going to go back to the storyboard. I'm going to select the table view. I'm going to choose the root view controller. 
and I'm going to go to the Identity Inspector, and for the class, I want to link it to the Movie View Table Controller. I'm going to select the Table View cell, and there's an identifier in the properties for the Table View cell that is going to tell our code which type of cell to use. We can have multiple types of cells in a Table View, so I'm going to say Movie identifier. I'm going to close the assistant editor. Let's look at that movie view table controller. And in the code where we had the cell for row at, where we're creating our different cells, in that DQ reusable cell, it says with identifier, and it gave us a default identifier of reuse identifier. I'm going to change that to movie identifier. I'm going to compile. Let's test. And there now are our movies. And we can scroll through the movies. They're in the order that I type them in. I like to have these sorted alphabetically. You remember we created that comparable protocol in the previous video. So I'm going to close my application. I'm going to come down to where we're populating the movies. I'm simply going to say movies sort, which is a method, and that sort method will use the comparable protocol that we specified in our movies.swift file. Now let's test. And now the movies are alphabetical, and where there are movies that are the same title but different years, the earlier year will show in above the older year. So there's the man who knew too much. If we scroll down, we're going to see True Grit, 1969, and 2010. The next thing we want to do is we'll have something happen when the user clicks on a cell. So back in the movie table view controller.swift file, I'm just going to type table. I want to create a function to do something when the user selects a row. So I'm going to select this method for did select row at table view. And I need to specify the code. So again, we're going to create a constant of let my movie of type movie equal movies. And our index is going to be index path dot row, so whatever row they selected. We're going to create a constant called DESC for description. It's going to equal my movie. And remember we set up the protocol for description using the custom string convertible. So I can just say my movie dot description. That's going to get the string that we created in the previous video for our protocol. And I'm going to set up an alert. So my alert is going to equal UI alert controller. And the detail, the title is going to be about the movie. And the message will be DESC, which is a string, and our preferred style will be dot alert. I want to create an action. I'm going to call it OK action. The UI alert action. Looking at my bugs there. So UI alert action, the title is going to be OK. And the style will be not default.
Next, I'm going to attach the alert action to the alert. with an add action method. And then we'll present the alert. Okay, I need to make sure this is this function is being overridden, so I just need to specify that we're overriding. And I need to make sure that my titles line up here, so it should be okay action. Um, all the errors have gone away. Let's just test this and see what we get. So now I can click on a movie and see the information about that movie, including the title, the year, the genre, the director, and the rating. Next, we're going to have this go, instead of showing an alert, we're going to have it go to a, another view that shows the details about this movie. And we'll use the original UI view controller uh, to make that happen. And we're going to pass data to that other UI view.